I'm going to start, BT, with this enormous extension that Michael Thomas just got from the New Orleans Saints. $100 million with $61 million guarantee, which makes him the highest paid wide receiver in the National Football League, besting Julio Jones, who's looking for a new deal, besting uh, A.B., Antonio Brown, um, who just got a new deal with the Oakland Raiders, and obviously Odell Beckham Jr., who was the top uh, 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 wide receiver, paid wide receiver in the league. But BT, is this too much? No. Are we starting? Too much. To, I mean, we're getting wide Stop. receivers in what two years ago was quarterback territory. It's too little. <laughs> is it too much? It's too little. Let me tell you something. There's only there's only three guys, and he is on the list of the three guys that I would give this kind of money to. Now, yep. one is DeAndre Hopkins, Julio, and the other obviously is a gentleman who got paid by the Saints. You know, I, I understand that we're going to overreact. Oh, it's 100 mil. Oh, it's 61 million guaranteed. Oh, the finances are incredibly distorted for the Saints. But if you look at his wide receiver peers, right? And I know you spent a lot of time on AJ Green. Yep. That's terrible. Hopefully he's all right soon. You know, a, just look at the snapshot of the of the best receivers in football. AJ Green, he's always banged up. Juju Smith-Schuster, yet to prove what he is yep. as a, as as a true number one. Mike Evans doesn't have a good catch rate, drops a lot of footballs. Uh, Adam Thielen doesn't get behind people really much, more of a, a, a quantity kind of a guy. Tyree Kill, can you trust him? And our answer is no. Odell <laughs> Beckham Jr., he's always hurt. He does, you know, and he's always hurt. So, and there's an element of, of, of not erratic behavior, but all the nonsensical drama that creeps into his existence. So, when I'm going to pay a wide receiver this amount of money, I want a guy who is obviously explosive, who is reliable, who shows up in the big games, and he obviously did that. You look at the benchmark games a year ago, whether it's the divisional win against the Eagles, he played great. Whether it's late September in Atlanta, he played great against the Steelers late December. He showed up, he played great. He's an absolute superstar. Let me ask you, what kind of question is that? Yeah, here's the Did they pay him too much? Yeah. No. <laughs> well, I mean, it's $20 million. It's not he deserves 30. Uh, it's, 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 look, here's the, here's the reality, though, and it's, and it's what you – all of what you said is right, but what you also missed, these, this Saints team has to be desperate. Right. They can't afford Michael Thomas to not be around or mm -hmm. to extensively hold out and get off to a slow start as the season begins, because this Saints team 13 and three last year, they were as good a team as there was in the National Football League, got robbed uh, in the <laughs> NFC championship game the year before. We all remember the miracle at Minnesota. They were 11 yep. and five that year, played as good as anybody. And Mark um, Alvin Kamara comes onto the scene. He's rookie of the year. I mean, they they, they were they were the team, right? Drew Brees mm -hmm. has got to get that next championship or that last, I should say, championship. How much is that window open? So they had to do this yes, because if yes, they don't have true. Michael Thomas, like the 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 dynast the the dynastic and the or the dynamism of that team is very mm -hmm. very different because everybody else they're good but they're nowhere near what Michael Thomas brings to this team and what Drew Brees can take yeah. advantage of in his last year. They had to me, do this. Yeah, I agree. But let me put it this way to you, Tick. So I, I highly doubt that in two years I'll be, you know, uh, b burning the top of my dome in, in oppressive heat in Utah <laughs> as we get ready to do this, you know, the, the, the 2021 at that point NFL preview. But when we do that, when we have that conversation and we get around to the Saints, is Drew Brees even on the team? No. To your, okay, no. Okay. No. Okay. Can't be. So – I agree. I agree. So even though this is an immediate reaction to Drew's football football mortality, which you and I both clearly acknowledge, whomever the next quarterback is, you've got one of the top receivers in football to help accelerate his transition. It's a win. Yeah, it is. But you you often worry when you do a, a long term deal like this because it's it's basically what four years, and then they have a little bit of an I can't, I can't remember what the back end of these deals look like. It's really the the sixty one million guaranteed that you worry about. You worry if you're going to regret it, right? If you have this high paid skill position player who doesn't match, you know these windows we always talk about. Oh, here we right? go. You're going to borrow it, my term? But it is. I have to, right? Because <laughs> if they don't get it done this year. Right. Yep. And Drew Brees is gone next year. Now you have this super high paid wide receiver. You have a really good running back still because Alvin Kamara, I think, has one more year under under team control. And then before you know it, it's like, what what are we what are we doing? How do we get back to where we where we were? And the only thing that mitigates that, BT, is if you draft 
or develop because you don't necessarily have to draft the, the, the you know, in the first round and have this superstar quarterback. You mm-hmm. got to develop someone who can take advantage of him because otherwise you're wasting your money paying him yeah. three years from now. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I, I, but I don't fully agree with that because think about this. Think about the apex, whatever. And I guess quite literally it was the one-handed catch against Dallas. Yep. But whatever the apex – of, of Odell Beckham Jr.'s career with the Giants was. Whatever that moment was, whatever <laughs> don't, that don't sequence was, Don't tell me that was, was year two. Come on. I know, right? In, in hindsight, it may have been, let's be honest. You're right. uh, he, he was show out in Cleveland, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, I can't wait to watch these guys play. I can't wait for hard knocks. I'm, I'm, I'm foaming at the mouth. I can't wait for football. I'm so pumped up. But think about this. Like, it, whatever that apex was, it would have seemed completely implausible even on the on the lowest level of plausibility to even think about trading Odell Beckham Jr., right? That's a good point. Okay. So what happened? Things went awry, and I don't think Michael Thomas's personality is going to change, but the point is you can always recover from a bad contract because there's somebody else out there that is always in their eyes a step away from the Super Bowl, a position away, a position of need away from being dominant and fulfilling their dreams. So even if, you know, say God forbid Drew Brees hits the wall this year yeah. and they go through back to back six and ten seasons and the rebuild is far more arduous than they thought it might be, trade them. Yeah. And that's and it's hard to even think about it when you just signed a guy, but you gotta trade him. It's gotta be a philosophy you think of. I, I to be honest with you, just to just to stick on Odell real quick, yeah. I think the reason that the Giants signed him to that deal was so that they could trade him, right? Because you think he was so? because he was hurt. At, remember, he was hurt at the time, BT. Yep. So he, he, no one was going to give him a deal given his injury history, his uh, propensity to be a pain on the field. Never in the locker room. At least nope. I'm not saying that. We don't know that. He's, he's been great, according to everybody we've ever heard, talk about him in the locker room. But I'm talking about on the field antics, um, you know, some of these departures when he's off the field. But he was hurt. And so nobody was going to was going to give him the money that he wanted. So the Giants kind of had to d- sign him so they could trade him. You know what I mean? Otherwise, they would have had to wait till the deal ended itself. And then who knows what, what goes on True. between because you think know, about front that. office if, if he's, and star player, and, you know, in the year or so that that would have taken. Yeah, especially if he's hurt again and his track right. record of injuries. I mean, you know, certainly don't want to, you know, just attach definitive poor health to somebody. Hopefully he's healthy and hopefully he balls out and he plays 16. The NFL is more fun when Odell Beckham Jr. is running wild in the secondary on Sundays. We all, we all want to watch him play. Uh, but based on his propensity to be hurt, I don't think it's unrealistic to say that he could be hurt again. So to your point, if you lock him up then, um, and, you know, and, and you, I should say if you trade him then, at least you're trading him without another injury on his resume. Because one more injury, and then it's now like, and I don't know the, if the word is untenable, but yeah. for some teams it would have been, all right, now, it's, now it is what it is. He's four or five years in, he's always hurt. Uh, that extra injury does change perception for A.J. Green. Yeah. I mean, think about it. A.J., you know, we have talked, we've had him on the show. We've talked about him a lot. He's always hurt. I like and him. don't you? I do too. But, I love him. But. 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 I mean, this is... he's, he's 31. He's, I think he's, he's 31 today. Today mm-hmm. is his birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, Seriously, buddy. Seriously, he's 31. No, I know. And you said this last year, and it, I, mean, I kind of co-signed it, but now I'm really thinking about it. Yep. They should have traded him. They should have traded him when they had the opportunity, when he still had some value left. Because yep. he's really good. Like, those first, like, five years of his season, of his career, he was unbelievable. Like, 1,400 yards, 1,200 mm-hmm. yards, like, multiple, like, eight, nine, ten touchdowns each every single year. And then when he hit 28 or 29, he started getting these injuries. And they were – Foot injuries. They, yeah, they were like big toe or turf yeah. toe or yeah. something that you in your mind you're like, dude, just play through that. But clearly yeah. it's something bigger than that because he missed, I think, a total – of at least 13 games over the last couple of years. And then you become unreliable. And then you hit 30. And then you hit 31. And yep. your team is now all of a sudden rebuilding. You're not so sure about Andy Dalton as your quarterback going forward. You got to start drafting guys. And you don't, you just, we, you don't align, right? Right now, A.J. Green doesn't align with what the Bengals uh, windows look like, whereas Michael Thomas, to contrast this, is perfectly in line with what the Saints window looks like. So you, just to jump back a year yeah. or so, yeah, they yeah. should have traded him because yeah. now they can't. Well, yeah, and think about this. Now he's he's in a place where no superstar ever wants to be, and that's called the retail bin. Yeah. I mean, if you try to trade him now, and it's funny, now I'm going to debate myself. Something I like to do on occasion, by the way. I find it pretty interesting. Last year, I'm, as Tiki said, I'm saying trade him. Now I'm saying don't trade yeah. him. 
because now you you know if you could have traded them for 75 or 80 cents on the dollar a year ago right now it's down to 60 maybe 65 so if I'm the Bengals I almost have to get him back and prove that he's explosive and you know he can still run and cut and he can make people miss and that he's still viable on Sundays and then maybe I look to trade him before the trade deadline whatever it is October whatever it is so you know, that, you know that, that's a fluid situation, but you know, pertaining to Michael Thomas, absolute superstar. It's not too much money. If they gave him $30 million, I know it makes no sense based on the finances. I understand that. But just to prove a point, he's reliable, he's dynamic, he's explosive, and he's durable. He earned every penny. No, you're absolutely right.